Welcome freezer mealers. I'm Sharla and I'm Christy and today we are talking about summer. It is here and we are going to give you today a summer slow cooker stack that you are going to love. We are going to help you get dinner on the table, but not contribute to the heat in your house. Mm -hmm. This is going to allow you to just set it and forget it. Go on and enjoy your summer because summer is short where we live here in Canada. It's true. And for those super hot days that we have here, we don't have as many of them as some of you in the South. I see you, Florida. I see you, Texas. But, you know, we do have them. It is a way better idea to just get your little slow cooker going rather than heating up your whole house when it's already like a million degrees outside. And stay tuned later in the video because we're going to be showing you something that can save even more of your summer this year. So right. let's get to the first recipe. Awesome. This first recipe is our pineapple teriyaki chicken. It's nice and bright and colorful, which is also great for summer and it's a little bit healthier because it's got your vegetables and everything right in there. So all you would need to do to serve this is make a side of rice or cauliflower rice and your whole meal is done. Into a large freezer bag, you're going to add some boneless skinless chicken breasts that have been cubed, teriyaki sauce, water, brown sugar, minced garlic we like to use the garlic from a jar that's already minced it just saves us a bit of time saves us a step some peeled and chopped carrots now these are just roughly chopped a can of pineapple chunks that's been drained red and green pepper that are seeded and chopped and a drained can of sliced water chestnuts that adds an awesome crunch you're going to put that all in your bag, squish it to mix it together, and then you're going to take the excess air out because in freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn. So we take the air out and then we can avoid that. You're going to freeze this flat and then on the day you go to cook it, all you do is dump it in your slow cooker. And in three to four hours, this is ready to eat. You can also cook this in the oven, but of course, since it's summer and we don't want to heat our houses up too much, you're probably just going to want to cook it in the slow cooker this time. We're going to have a link to the recipe in the description below this video. This next recipe is one of our summer favorites. It is cowboy baked beans. You're going to need to do a little bit of prep for this one. You want to brown your ground beef ahead. You're going to cook up about half a pound of bacon and crumble it and you need to chop a few vegetables. So in your bag you are going to add your browned ground beef and some diced onion, diced green pepper, minced garlic, again we use it out of the jar because it's just so fast, a little bit of onion powder, your bacon, now this is about eight slices here which is ah, half a pound ish, I think you measure bacon with your heart with this one couple of tablespoons of brown sugar, some baked beans. Now in this recipe, it is large. You want four 14 ounce cans of baked beans. We'll add in some barbecue sauce and some Dijon mustard. Once that's all in the bag, you want to squish it around, remove the excess air, seal it and freeze it. On the day of cooking, sometimes I have done this on the stove top, but this is a star in the slow cooker. You want to Put it on high for two to four hours or on low for three to five hours. You can serve this as a main course with cornbread or you can do it like I do and take it to every potluck I have for the rest of the summer to the point where it is now requested because it is such a hit. True story. It is true and everybody loves it. It is easy and what says summer more than baked beans, these cowboy beans. Uh, we are taking these camping with us this summer because this is like the ultimate camping meal, It right? is ultimate camping meal. This is summer for sure. And it's great for days when you've been in the pool or been like your family goes four by fouring. So like when you've done something really active or, you know, my kids are usually cliff jumping or mountain biking or anything dangerous. <laughs> so then when they're nice and hungry, this is what you can feed them. Absolutely. And we, I camp like a princess in a camper. 
I take my slow cooker with me and it's just plugged right in there. Sometimes we are boondocking, which means we're there without any electricity. Like we're not in a campsite, we're out in, um, in, in the States, it would be like the Bureau of Land Management type places. Here we call it Crown Land because we're in Canada. And, and I can't leave it running because I don't want to leave my generator running. Right. So that's when I do it on the stovetop. You could do this over the campfire if you had the right pot for it. You totally, totally could. These zippy shredded chicken tacos are like a burst of flavor, which is perfect for summer. They are just four ingredients. So this is done in a flash. Seriously, three minutes and this meal is in your freezers. So double, triple, or quadruple it because future you will be very glad that you did this and you can pull this out for the next few months. In your large freezer bag, you're going to put some chicken breasts, you're gonna put some taco seasoning. We either make our own or we buy it at Bulk Barn. Then you're gonna put some ranch seasoning, some dry ranch seasoning. So about two tablespoons, which is half a packet or about so. About half a packet. And a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. This is so flavorful, even though you've only got three ingredients in that marinade. Squish it all together, get it in your freezer, of course, removing the air before you seal it. And on the day you go to cook this, you just toss it in your slow cooker for four to five hours on low, and then you're gonna shred it, and then you can serve this in tacos or on nachos. You can serve it in walking tacos, like tacos in a bag if you mm -hmm. go camping. We love to do that. This one is just so, so fresh and nice because you're gonna, of course, put your taco fixings. So you've got your shredded lettuce, some diced tomatoes, some green onion. If you like to do avocado, black olives, mm. cheese, like, you know. You're making me hungry. <laughs> like, like now I need to eat this. It's so good. We need to eat this. It is so good. This Dr. Pepper pulled pork is another camping favorite and potluck favorite. In fact, last summer, I was invited to a pulled pork contest, kind of like you have a chili cook-off. We had friends that said, bring your best pulled pork recipe, and this is what I took. And this one packed some heat, so it was different from everybody else's, and it really was a hit. So did it win? I don't know if we ever really actually had a vote. It was all, oh. We were all too nice. It was like, it was all friends, and we were all too nice, but we all were like, ooh, yours is so good, yours is so good said it to me the most because this one really is the best it is the best it is the best and the, to eat a pulled pork sandwich if you weren't aware you need to you need to put the garlic mayonnaise on your bun and you have to add the coleslaw right to the sandwich you put your your garlic mayo then your pulled pork and then the coleslaw then your top part of the bun and then you get the crunch along with the flavor and if you're having this at a potluck a gathering a barbecue that kind of thing and there is some plain chips, potato chips mm. on the side. My kids like to add those for, for crunch. extra crunch. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That is good. Okay, we'll get to the recipe here. You want to start out with a big pork shoulder or pork butt, five to seven pounds, a good hunk of meat there. We're going to add in a coarsely chopped onion. Now here's where the heat comes, the chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. We're gonna add a can of those. Now they're big and they're chunky and they do really pack heat. I remove them when I cook it because it's hot enough for me. I didn't for this cook-off. Charlotte's family leaves them in the whole time they get cooked and I think they even get, you know, shredded yeah, we and shredded eaten. in them, yeah. Um, and we just, we have different spice levels happening at our houses and that's how you can adapt. Freeze your meals for yourself. After those chipotle peppers, we're going to add in some Dr. Pepper. We want two cans of Dr. Pepper in there, and that's gonna give us some of the sweet along with a little bit more kick. And we're gonna add in some brown sugar, some salt and pepper, and that is it. You're gonna seal up your bag and get all those flavors in there marinating. Make sure there's no air in your bag. You wanna freeze it. Now on the day of cooking, it should be thawed already. This is a total built for the slow cooker kind of recipe, obviously. Um, in your crock pot on high for four to five hours or on low for seven to eight. You're gonna shred it, it shreds beautifully. You can shred those adobo peppers or you can remove them entirely and pretend that they never happened and enjoy the heck out of this recipe. 
Before we get to the last recipe, we want to tell you guys about something that we're excited about. Very excited something about. Something that will make your summer even easier. And that is we are having a summer meal survival kit sale. What that is, because what the heck is a summer meal survival kit, is we have bundled together a whole bunch of PDFs that you can grab for a super low price for a limited time. This is going to be here and gone quickly. So if you want this, act on it now. Included in this is a camping freezer stack, barbecue freezer stack, grill them up freezer stack, skillet freezer stack because again you don't want to heat your house up a summer slow cooker freezer stack and that is the one we're doing today we're going to talk more about that in a second snacks for kids freezer stack because in the summer when your kids are home all day they are relentlessly, relentlessly hungry, hungry. <laughs> like unbelievably hungry i can't even get over how often you hear, Mom, I'm hungry. Is there anything to eat? Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, now there is. <laughs> now your freezer is just full of snacks that they can go grab, and a lot of them are really healthy, so you don't even have to feel badly about sending them over there. Then we've got some cheat sheets that are salmon marinades and a couple sheets of chicken marinades, so you can print those off and put them on your fridge for easy reference. We're going to talk a little bit about this summer slow cooker freezer stack that we're doing today. So this is what it looks like when you get your summer meal survival kit. You will get printable PDFs that look just like this. This one is the summer slow cooker freezer stack. Inside you will find notes about this plan. You will find the full recipe of everything that we have talked about here today. We have one more recipe to go. And you will be pleased to know that there is a shopping list for every recipe, but it's actually a shopping list for if you wanted to make one of each or if you wanted to do two of each. You could come away with two stacks of slow cooker meals. And don't worry, we didn't forget. It even has the prep list. It's gonna tell you how many onions to chop, how much beef to brown, how many carrots to chop, everything that you need to do to get ready to assemble your meals because that is really key in making it fast. And then our favorite part, might not be your favorite part, but it's our favorite part. Printable labels. Every label has the cooking instructions right on it so that you don't have to go back and find your recipe or go look online. It's just right there. You can take these camping where you don't have any service and it just makes it really convenient for you. That really is a lifesaver for us. We love having the labels. So this summer slow cooker freezer stack is included in the summer meal survival kit. So you wanna check that out because it will be gone quickly and we really think it's gonna help make your summer easier. We just wanna make sure that we can walk you through every step of this process because we won't necessarily be there in your, in, kitchen. in your kitchen on YouTube telling you how to make this recipe. So we've written it all down for you. I promise you it won't be hard. This takes the guesswork out of it. You can find a link in the description below to go and grab your summer meal survival kit. This last recipe in the summer slow cooker stack is the pesto minestrone. So nice. Oh, it's the good one with the wine. It is the good one. When we got this recipe, when we first developed this recipe, we had tried a few different ones and then kind of amalgamated until we found the one that we liked the best. But it was always, well, which one are we making? Is it the good one <laughs> with the wine? And so after a while, that's the only one we that's make. That's the only one we make anymore. And so me asking her it was totally a uh, rhetorical question because obviously it's the good one. It's the, the good one. one. We're only going to show you the good one. The good one. We go through that whole process of testing the bad ones before we bring you the good ones. That's true. <laughs> and the other ones weren't even particularly bad. This no, one was just the best, the best the one. Best. It was the best one. So in a medium quart size freezer bag, you're going to measure out one and a half cups of pasta, just dry pasta. We usually use bow tie for this or macaroni. And then in your large freezer bag, you're gonna add some diced onion, 
garlic, celery, except we don't always add the celery because I'm allergic to celery, but if you're not allergic, go ahead and throw that celery in there. Some sliced carrots, white wine. Now you can use some apple juice or dealcoholized wine if you prefer. Diced tomatoes, and you just keep the juice in those because it's soup. Some mixed beans that are drained and rinsed, even though it's soup. Tomato paste, Italian seasoning, pepper, Parmesan cheese, which is the other thing along with the wine and this mm -hmm. next ingredient, which is the pesto, that helped to just kick this up. And then you're going to get the air out, squish it to combine it, seal it, of course. Not in that order. <laughs> you're gonna seal it before you <laughs> squish it. <laughs> You are, we tell you step by step what to do, but you are going to have to apply some common sense along the way. <laughs> and then on the day you go to cook this, you're going to add some vegetable broth. You're going to put all of this into your slow cooker and it can kind of cook all day on low if you want, like up to six hours. And then you're going to add the pasta about 20 minutes before you serve it to allow the pasta to cook through right in there. This is such a nice one. Sometimes you think about soups as just being a winter thing, but soups are great for summer days, especially when they're like this one and they have so many vegetables and they're healthy. It's so fresh, and right? It's such a fresh taste with the pesto mm -hmm. and the wine and parmesan. Absolutely. It's like you're sitting on your own little street in Italy. <laughs> I'm sitting on my back deck having soup, pretending I'm in Italy. It's nice to be me. <laughs> it's good to take a trip around my head. <laughs> so these are a really nice collection of summer slow cooker meals. We've got a lot of variety here because you've got your vegetarian meal, you've got your chicken, your pork. We had a little bit of we some beef, beef with in some there. bacon in it. <laughs> so Aww. we kind of took a trip around with the proteins. We didn't include any seafood in this, but if you get that summer survival kit, you've got all the salmon marinades and there's some other seafood recipes that might make their appearance. I would not suggest salmon goes in the slow cooker. No. However, we have talked about salmon going in the dishwasher before. If you look back <laughs> at past videos, you can Google it. It's a thing. I haven't done it and I don't recommend it, but it's a thing. And salmon can go on your barbecue, of course, mm -hmm. which is Super great summer. for summer. And again, it doesn't heat up your house. Yes. So we are all about making things easier for you, giving you those life hacks like having your snacks ahead in the freezer so that when you hear, mom, <laughs> You are, you just you're way ahead of the game, right? Um, and that's what we want for you. We want you to have that feeling of having this done, feeling accomplished, feeling like in this part of your life, you at least have it a little bit together. Um, because that is like the one area of my life I do kind of feel like I have it together and we desperately want that for you. We're gonna put a link right there to a video we have with some of our chicken marinades because those are awesome for summer too. We thank you so much for joining us today. And tell us in the comments below what you do to survive your hot summers. Happy cooking. Bye.